Okay, so on to our last example here, uh, example number seven, and to determine if the function is even odd or neither. Now, this is something that we previously discussed, but we mainly just focused on the graphical approach. And remember, even functions are symmetrical about the y-axis, and odd functions are symmetrical about the um, odd functions are symmetrical about the origin. So. What we can do and look in this, there's another algebraic way to kind of represent that. And I'll kind of explain that here in a little bit. I guess I can kind of go a little extra here. So if you think about this, if something is symmetrical about the y-axis, let's just use a quadratic here, right? What that means then is the points are exactly the same. Like if I say this is 2 and I say like this is negative 2, like they both have the exact same y value of like four. For instance, let's just say this is like x squared. Like, let's say this equation x is x squared, right? So they both have the y value of four and two or negative two. So that means if I, um, let's say the function is f of x equals x squared. That means if I plug in two for x or if I plug in negative two for x, I'm gonna get the exact same output value which is four. Right? So the way to mathematically kind of represent that to determine if something is even, if we take a function and we plug in the opposite value of the input, negative x, and we get back our original function, then the function is said to be even. And again, this is in your previous notes. Um, or if we take a function and we input in the opposite value of x, and if we get the opposite of f of x, then that function is said to be odd. And the example, you know, for that, we could look at a, um, you know, the cubic function. Cubic function is an odd function. And let's just do, you know, if we do 2 here and 2 here, what we'd get is 2 uh, cubed, if we looked at f of x equals x cubed, if we do 2 cubed, we would get 8. But if we did negative 2 cubed, we would get negative eight. Okay, so basically the really the easy, I mean, that helps you with our graphical approach, which I um, for, did not add the links, but I'm gonna go and do that so we can confirm our results. But algebraically, we don't need to look at the graphs for any of these. You know, it's nice to be able to pull up a graphing calculator and like see how it looks, but we don't need to. All we simply need to do is like our warm up, is just plug in f of negative x and evaluate. If it gives us the exact same function back, we know that it is symmetrical about the y-axis. So let's plug in negative x. If I plug in negative x here, I get negative x cubed minus negative x, use your parentheses, plus seven. Well, negative x cubed is negative x times negative x times negative x, which is still just going to be a negative x cubed. Um, negative x squared is positive x squared, but again, then you're multiplying it by a negative here, so that's a negative x squared plus seven. So now we need to compare this, but we gotta make sure it's not just the values that we're comparing, but it's also the signs. And we can see that these are not the original, this is not the same function as what we did, so it's not a even function. It's also not the opposite. Only one of these terms has the opposite sign. So if all the terms had opposite signs, then obviously we'd say it's the op, you know, opposite of f of x, but only one term has opposite signs, so therefore, this is an example of a neither function. The function has no symmetry. Um, now let's go and check g of x. So if I check g of x here, I plug in g of negative x. So by doing this, I get two over negative x squared minus five, okay? So negative x squared again is x squared, so I get two over x squared minus five. And what you can see here is by plugging in negative x, I get the exact same function back. So therefore, I have a function that is symmetrical about the y-axis, so it is even. And then last but not least here, I can check the symmetry of h of x. Um, so I'm gonna plug in negative x, and by doing that, negative x squared plus one. Okay, so negative x is just gonna be negative x times the square root of negative x squared is gonna be now positive x squared plus one. Oops, I forgot there was a two there. Okay, so what you see though is this is the exact same function f of x, but the opposite of f of x, right? If you were to like kind of put parentheses here, 
this is your original h of x, right? Inside the parentheses is our original h of x, and then it's being multiplied by a negative, so it's the opposite value here. So this is opposite of f x. So therefore, this is an example of odd. Now, what I'd like to do is just kind of show you the Desmos equivalent of this, see how this works. Oh, no, it didn't bring it to the right browser. That's okay. We'll go ahead and plug in over here, and let's plug in these uh, equations. So let's do f of x equals x cubed minus x squared plus 7. Okay, and as you look at this function, you can see that it is not symmetrical, right? This function is, this graph is not symmetrical about the y-axis, right? So for whatever value here I plug here, that's not the same value over there, um, nor is it symmetrical about the origin. So that's why the first solution was neither. Let's do the next one, g of x equals 2 divided by x squared minus 5. Okay, let's maybe zoom out here. Okay, so now in this example you can see that this is an example of an even function because no matter what x value, if I plug in the positive x, like let's play 5, if I plug in positive 5 or if I plug in negative 5, I'm going to get the same value. That's what the symmetry of the y-axis tells us and that's why our algebraic operation helps us. It doesn't matter if I plug in 10 or negative 10, negative 15 or negative 15, you know, 1 or negative 1, the x or negative x, you're going to get back the original function. That's what the even function, that's what the symmetry allows us, you know, to do. So that's why you can see why that second example algebraically is even, but then also graphically you can see that it's even as well. And then let's do the last one here is h of x. x square root of 2x squared plus 1. All right, so now you can see in this example that this graph is um, odd. So, you know, let's look at, uh, I don't know, what's an easy one here? Let's look at that. So that's 2. So let's look at 2. At 2, it looks like we're crossing roughly. I'm just not going to be exact. But at 2, it looks like we're roughly crossing at 6, right? And I know, again, that's um, not uh, 2. Let's see, 4. Um, yeah, that would be 6, actually, if I plug that in. So at 2, we get 6. So if this is an odd function, that means we should have, when I plug in negative 2, I should get negative 6. And you can see at negative 2, let's maybe let's try zooming in. Yeah. Oh. Dang it. Come on. There you go. So you can see at 2, we're at 6. And then when I plug in my negative 2, I'm going to get negative 6. And that's true for all the values. I mean, it doesn't matter whatever positive value I choose. If I choose the negative value, rather than getting the same result like an even function, I'm now going to get the opposite result. So that's what we're looking for when we are um, determining this algebraically is to plug in the opposite of x. And if you get the exact same function back, it's even. And if you get the opposite of that function, then it's going to be odd. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is it for the operations of our function notation. Thanks.